Good evening. evening. How are you? Good. I mean, well, you're divided into two groups, but we're going to make it one. So everybody's excellent tonight. How are we? All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming out this evening. Um, I was excited and still excited about this project in that Peter and I talked about uh, some of the things, particularly about life and the meaning of life. And I will tell you this. The project came at such a time that uh, a few years ago I was going through a battle with prostate cancer. And so when the question comes up, what gives your life meaning, the first thing I say is knowing that you may not have a life gives you meaning. And you don't know how long you're here. It could end in the blink of an eye, uh, in the middle of the night, in the morning. So that's what gives it meaning. Now. I will also, before I go into this, give you a little housekeeping. Um, my prostate uh, treatment was over about two years ago. For many of you, some of the adults, I'll tell you my uh, treatment included hormone therapy. Uh, hormone therapy is a treatment where it lowers your testosterone, and quite frankly, it causes hot sweats and sweating and hormone imbalance and you name it. And uh, ladies, I'm quite sure some of you can agree with me. You haven't reached that point yet. <laughs> However, there are times when hot flashes come. Uh, so in the midst of this, if I start sweating, it hasn't all gotten out of my system yet. So please know where it's coming from, all right? <laughs> we all on the same page? Yeah. All right. So again, when, when Peter asked me about the question, what gives your life meaning, again, it was knowing that the end could be here at any point in time. And uh, it really made me reflect on what is important uh, and what I was put on earth here to do. You see, I had gotten so involved in making a living and earning money that, you know, I started to really ignore some of the things that are around me that represented beauty. Um, the other thing about giving meaning to life is improving the lives of others. When I was sitting in the cancer ward at uh, Johns Hopkins, you know, everybody who came in had one common goal, and we all wanted to survive. So therefore, it didn't, work, it didn't matter what your political affiliation was, how much money you had, you know, what race you were. We had one common goal. All of us wanted to survive, and we were one group of people. So again, the meaning of life is knowing what it's about, knowing what you're here for. And then the other thing is, is being a husband and a father, a son, my mom and brother are here, and my sister, uh, and knowing that I have a network of people here that love, love me, care for me. And then the other thing is being a parent. Um, and then as I look back and hear some of the things that my, my parents used to tell me about, don't make me come back there. Or if I needed you to yell, I could have went upstairs myself and did it. Or I could have yelled upstairs. And now I look at all of those experiences now and say, man, I'm doing the same thing that my parents did. And, and, and I'm giving them the same responses. And that's the beauty of it is while we were going through it, it was the worst thing possible. And then we find ourselves really looking back at those life lessons and using them to help the next generation. The other question was, how do you think about your own dying or passing? Easy. I don't. I've been there once before, and I don't want to think about it again. <laughs> the other thing is, is what do you say to young people coming after you? And there are a couple of things. I would say listen to the stories of the past. Listen to some of the struggles that your family may have gone through. Listen to some of your friends and what they've gone through in life. The stories will come back and provide great lessons in life. So listen to them. Travel often to broaden your horizons. Get out of Baltimore, although it's a lovely place. Come back. But you need to explore other places in the world because it broadens your horizons. Particularly, it can keep you out of trouble. It can keep your mind focused on other things. You know there's a better alternative to the way you're living now. And that's the beauty of travel. I have to give credit to my mom who took us through, uh, you know, many trips when we were growing up. And I remember scuba diving in Puerto Rico when I think I was about nine years old. And, 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 and the bubbles coming out of the snorkel, I thought I was going to die, just so you know. But we, we, we had it taken care of. 
but just the, the travel experience that mom provided and the rides when we went up with our dad up to Philadelphia to get a hoagie that he always said was the best, although I beg to differ. All right, but when I was in the car with dad, dad was right. His hoagies were best since he was from Philly. Listen to good music that frees the soul. I would implore you, 21-year-old, go listen to a little bit of Tammy Terrell and Marvin Gaye. Listen to Chicago, all right, Three Dog Night, all right, uh, Classic Four, Oh, Stormy. How many of you remember that song? Don't, 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 all right, okay, all right. Bring back that. Yeah. All right, so you all need to listen to some of this stuff. Keeps you, keeps you in the right frame of mind when trouble comes your way. The other thing is, bear with me here, make a whole heck of a lot of money. Why do I say that? Because later on in life, quite frankly, and I never thought I would say this, that money doesn't matter. Get the bills paid, but make a lot of money so that when it's time for you to transition to another line of work, money is now off the table. You've already made enough. You know what it's like to have enough money. Now you can go out and fulfill your passion. And you can do it with such energy and knowing that, hey, this is what I'm called to do. So make a lot of money so that's always off the table when it comes to reaching for your dreams. The other thing is, I would say, is follow your heart, but use a road map. Sometimes you follow your heart and you go around in circles and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm at the same place, I, you know, I'm same place where I started. Use a road map. Use the road map of others who have went before you and may have some trials and tribulations to share with you. But use a road map. And then, if you don't use their road map, at least use one of your own. Create a plan to follow your heart. Because quite frankly, there's a biblical scripture that says, for where your heart is, yes, indeed. If, when your heart is in it, everything makes a way. Everything makes a way. It's amazing that if you love something, people can pick up on it. They'll offer you money. They'll pay your way to something. Try it out. Trust me. If folks know that you are interested or you have a project that's close and dear to your heart, trust me. Share it with them, and you'll be amazed at how many want to support you. So what I would say tonight is live your dream and dibby-dibby. And you say, what the heck is dibby-dibby? I'll share this very quick story with you. My paper's coming up. Dibby Dibby, it's dream it, believe it, do it, be it. Everybody say Dibby Dibby. Dibby, Dibby. Dream it, believe it, do it, be it. Thank you so much.